The Legend of Peter Bove from Mauritius Tucked beneath the highest clouds hovering over Mocha Range on the island of Mauritius is a strange peak called Muria Bahar. The island itself, which sits like a gem over shimmering crystal clear turquoise lagoons, has captured the imagination of many down the years. Renowned for its natural beauty, sailors often drifted to its shores to lay anchor for a long stay. The wild remote landscape towards the steep slopes of Muria Bahar peaks bears a name today, that of Peter Both. This name of the mountain was given by the Dutch settlers who needed a direction point to enter the lagoons, trying to avoid the coral reefs. It received its local name from an old myth, told in whispers as it held a deep secret. Passers-by through generations tell the story of an enchanted spot on the softer veil of the peak, where a slice opened like a window and the land was flat. Many fruit trees grew there with rows of vines laden with berries. A small spring nearby gurgled its way through the black basalt rocks, gushing crystal clear water. The spot was enchanting and beautiful, and no one had ever set foot there. There lived a very poor milkman in the nearby village, down the valley who made his way up the slopes each day to cultivate a small wild patch, which he had stumbled upon one day searching for firewood. He thought that no one would come this far up the mountain, and as he owned no land, he decided he would grow some vegetables and herbs which he could sell. So that's what he did. Each day early morning, he went door to door on his bicycle to sell some fresh milk, from the only cow he owned. He kept some of the milk for himself and the cow's calf and then sold the rest. After he came back, he would change, take his hoe and a jerrican of water, heading towards the mountain. Months went by and he started getting good yields from his vegetable patch and was making a profitable sale each time he went down to the nearest town. At home, no one asked him any questions. Days were long, tiring, but fruitful. He would reach home, wash, take some food, and would sleep straight away. One day, coming back from a long day of labor, he heard some music playing and soft singing. He looked around and saw no one. He carried on walking and heard the same again. He stopped and listened. A rustle of leaves made him turn around, and there was a maiden, floating in the most dazzling dress with sparkling dust flowing around her as she moved. She was the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. He rubbed his eyes, thinking he must be dreaming. Yet, what was in front of him was real. Her skin was as white as milk, her long hair red as mahogany bark, and she had eyes like honey. She spoke to him. I know who you are. I see you each day passing by this way. If you can see me, then I can grant you the secret of our hideaway. Hideaway? But who, who are you? He stuttered, stumbling in shock. We are fairies. My sisters and myself live here. It is a secret place and nobody has ever seen us before. I know you are poor and work very hard and that you are a good man. If you promise that you will never disclose the way to this place, I can grant you three wishes. Ask and I shall grant them. Three wishes? Really? They will come true? No, I promise I will never tell anyone about you or this place. You have my word. Yes, three only, replied the maiden. Of course, of course, I will promise. 
So, what is your first wish? Hmm, my first wish um, is that I have two more cows so that I can get more milk to sell and don't have to climb up and down daily to cultivate vegetables. You know, it gets hard when it rains with all that mud. My cow is very good and she gives sweet milk, but I'm sure she'd be happy to have some company. Granted, said the maiden. The maiden was in fact a fairy, and she took him to a clearing, where there were two more fairies bathing in the stream, singing and playing some music. It was magical. He sat down, and they gave him some fruits to eat, and they chatted till the sun started setting. He left them filled with amazement and reached home to reflect on whatever he had just witnessed. He went to the stable to talk to his cow, and to his surprise, there were two more cows lazily munching sugarcane branches. His first wish had just been granted. He danced with joys, with tears in his eyes, not knowing what to think and what to do next. That night he slept, dreaming about the fairies. The next morning he woke up, milked the cows and made himself a nice cup of steaming tea with milk. He sat down to eat his breakfast made of a meagre piece of roti and butter. His eyes welled with tears and he could not think why he was having such good luck suddenly. Life had not been easy for him. He made his milk round to the neighbouring region as usual. Mrs. Kumar, who was waiting for him to get her morning share of fresh milk for her morning tea, said the next day, complimenting him, Oh, the milk was excellent yesterday. Can you double my share as from tomorrow? Mrs. Kumar referred him to some more customers and each was happy. He talked to his cows each morning after milking and gave them the juiciest and freshest of sugar cane and grass to eat. He lived in a thatched and corrugated roof shack. With each cyclone blowing, with tropical torrential rains, he had many nights staying awake with buckets to catch water, listening to the howl of the fierce winds. He started cultivating his land. During the months that followed, he met the fairies and amazingly was granted his second and third wishes, which were to own his own agricultural land and to have a decent place to live. At the end of the day, someone knocked at his door and left him the deeds to a nearby land. All this was happening very quickly. He was much happier and sang at the top of his voice, even though toiling hard under the strong sun of the day. His crops soon started to show themselves with a promising yield. Amongst this joyous change in circumstances, an ill-willed and envious neighbour was watching him closely. He could not comprehend this sudden show of prosperity, nor how the milkman lifestyle was improving each day. He waited for an opportunity to ask him some questions. As per his promise to the fairies, the milkman would not reveal anything. He gave him vague answers and left for the day's work in the field. Hmm, this is very strange. The neighbour thought to himself. That milkman wouldn't give me any straight answers. There must be something else to this sudden prosperity of his. I will find out, by hook or by crook. So the next morning... He watched him take his bag to depart for the mountain and followed him discreetly. After a long hike, huffing and puffing, trying to catch his breath, he stopped and sat down to rest. He heard some faint voices, laughter and music. His attention rose and he stood up. He searched around to locate where the noises were coming from and bending some bushes, he saw something that froze him to the bone. The milkman was high up in the air, a beautiful lady holding his hand, and they were floating while two others were singing and dancing. 
Each had a different color of hair, one flaming red, one of unicorn colors, and one dark as the night. Their eyes shone like small slits of light. Their singing voice was as soft as a lullaby, and they glowed in glitters and stars. He had never seen anything so enchanting. He could not feel his feet any more. Now this envious nature raged through him, and he rushed through the bushes like a madman. There you are. This is your secret, and these are your friends. The fairy stopped short and dropped Milkman. He fell hard on the ground. One of the fairies spoke. I told you you never to disclose our secret. Who is this man, and how did he reach here? I don't know," pleaded the milkman, full of tears. He is my neighbor. He must have followed me. I've never told anyone about our secret, not even to my cows. Alas, it was too late. The enchantment broke. The two fairies disappeared, and the third struck the milkman with a curse and turned him into a rock on the spot. Next to him, the fairy turned herself into a rock too. The neighbor became mad. He forgot what he had seen, and he was rescued wandering in the mountain after days going missing. Nobody ever knew about the secret. Today, Muria Pahar, that is Peter Booth, the mountain with a head, still stands tall, and next to him another small rock shaped like a lady with a gown. They overlook the vast valley reaching to the sea, frozen in silence. Mm-hmm.